for the truth the girls. Hi everyone. I wanted to do a quick vlog here about something that's really been on my mind concerning autism. Um, autism pride versus autism cure. I, I spent quite a bit of time in some uh, autism related chat groups and uh, support groups and things like that. And what I found after a while was that there's this big divide between the two. On one hand, uh, autism pride, that autism is a natural variation and this is just a question of neurodiversity. On the other hand, on the cure side, the, the perspective is that it's, it's more of a medical condition, it's a medical disorder. On the pride side, largely, you know, it's just neurodiversity and they're just seeking acceptance and even view autism as a gift. On the cure side, they would say it's usually the result of some kind of an injury, such as a vaccine injury, and that what they're seeking is accountability. And so there's this big polarization between the two sides. I mean, because really, like, people are like, you know, you got to pick sides. Is it autism pride or is it autism cure? The autism pride side would kind of look at the autism cure seekers uh, and say that, you know, these are enemies of the, the autism community and of neurodiversity. Whereas on their part, the people who are seeking a cure uh, would look at the people who are just all about pride and, and say, um, you know, not entirely, but say that, you know, they're somewhat off in la-la land, you know, the land of uh, rainbows and happy endings, and uh, that they're part of the problem because they're accepting damage. So they, they would say, you know, that uh, if, if you think that that's okay, then you're kind of part of the problem because you're saying it's okay to have vaccine damage. Yay, it's all good. Uh, and, and you know, I'm not trying to take sides here. I'm just trying to show you like what's happening. So I think that the problem here is that <clears throat> the term autism is actually autism spectrum disorder and it's really an umbrella term. And on one hand, you have something like Asperger syndrome, which I'm actually diagnosed with. So you have Asperger here, then you know, you have high functioning autism also. And then on the other end, you have more severe autism. I think it'd be kind of impossible to, you know, take something like the human brain and the human nervous system and, and try to map it out into something like a, a, a diagnostic and statistical manual and say, like, a person has this, 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 they fit in that category. It's not that clear cut, but I guess they try. On the, on the, on the high functioning, so-called high functioning end, like the Asperger end, um, you could say maybe it's more likely that it's a, a natural variation, natural neurodiversity. Um, I don't think that anything happened to me. I don't think. And, uh, you know, it's probably just the way that I'm wired. Um, and, and, and what comes along with that? First of all, you have gifts. A lot of people with Asperger's have some really great gifts. I mean, they could be really, really good at some particular thing. They could have also talents, special abilities. One of the cool things about it that I like is this amazing ability to hyper-focus. That, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I can super hyper-focus like that. I would not, not want to be able to do that. If, I, if being neurotypical meant I had to lose that, then no thank you. The, the more difficulty side, I mean, it, it is a diagnosis, so that's because there are some difficulties. Of course, everyone in the world faces difficulties, but um, sensory processing the difficulties, I would say probably like that's the thing that actually causes me problems for the most part, like that's kind of a pain. Then there's a certain amount of like mental inflexibility, like, hence the, the routines and all that. Um, there's some social difficulties, you know, uh, communication difficulties, a lot of people with like nonverbal communication and things like that. Social reciprocity um, and sometimes empathy. And there, there's a big range. I mean, a lot of people like me, if I told you I have an ASD, you'd be like, what? No way. Or maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. But a lot of people work, so they're like, you look perfectly normal to me. But, you know, I am normal, I'm just not neurotypical. But that's a lot different than someone who, you know, received a shot and like really deteriorated and they suffer a lot. This is like a totally different thing as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there is overlap, they have things in common, but they're not the same thing. Autism that's like maybe caused by some kind of an injury, they have things like seizures, self-injurious behavior. A lot of them, their, their IQ is uh, low, I mean, they've, they have some intellectual impairment and, and also on the medical end there's things like gut damage you know a lot of uh, problems with that and encephalitis some of them have had that severe sensory processing issues and autoimmunity 
But you see, there's a lot of like medical problems on that end. Now, I think that this is the problem. It's an umbrella term. It's in the psych manual. It's, it's as a psychiatric diagnosis, which is a bit ridiculous. I guess they do that because of the behavioral symptoms. But I think that's the problem. It's, it's, it's an umbrella term. And uh, so, you know, it's, it, people are kind of prone to, to having black or white thinking. Like, why does it have to be pride or cure? I mean, I'm proud to be Aspie, whatever. I don't have a problem with it. I think people should be proud of whatever they are, however they are. On the other hand, there's, uh, there's some people who's, you know, they've watched their children's immune systems and guts be completely ruined. These kids are in diapers at 12 years old. They're sick. They have seizures. They're in pain. I mean, that is not okay. What are you supposed to do? Like, say, you know, it's all good? Because the people who are trying to, you know, cure autism in their children, like, they're, they're trying to cure medical problems. They're not trying to make their kids neurotypical. I don't think so. I don't think it's about that at all. But I, I'm kind of sad to see that there's this dichotomy. It's like you got to pick sides. Maybe, you know, what they have to be should be doing is looking at, you know, the, the medical end of it more as a medical problem, not just like, oh, that's just part of their autism. In fact, there was a study in the Pace Environmental Law Review. It's called Unanswered Questions from the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. A review of compensated cases of vaccine-induced brain injury. And the fact is that uh, about 60 people in their survey reported they had received compensation for vaccine-induced brain injury that involved autism-like symptoms. So the symptoms were, in those cases, really just part of a, an injury. Something's very wrong here, but instead of looking at the big picture and thinking like, what, you know, how could this be sorted out and addressed? It's like people are just sort of dividing into two camps, pride versus cure, and you're either an enemy of neurodiversity or you're, you're part of the problem because you're saying it's all good. Reminds me a lot of like in politics, Republican or Democrat? Well, what, what football team do you, do you root for? You have to pick sides. It's this or it's that. Why does it have to be so black and white? I, I find this really troubling. And uh, I'm afraid to say anything about autism because I figure I'm probably going to piss somebody off. Of course, you know, I'm an Aspie, so I, I piss people off all the time. Anyway, that's what I think. And thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.